Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Adobe Live. I'm your host today, Fabiola Lara, and I'm here with Juliana Brosti, aka Traveling Jewels, to get her Yep. to get into her travel vlogging and travel video journalism process. Now, before we get started with our stream today, remember to join the Adobe Live community, subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Instagram at Adobe Live, so you can get the latest updates and so much more. Now, Juliana, please introduce yourself and uh, give us a little bit about your background and your experience as a filmmaker and storyteller. Thanks for having me. This is so exciting to be with you. I'm a travel filmmaker and it's just, it's been a wonderful, exciting career trying to build a life doing what you love to do. Uh, you know, actually when I was um, in college, I actually didn't have a passport and I decided that I would study abroad, which was this crazy zany thing I never ever had uh, ever thought of until all my friends said they were looking into it. And so <laughs> by, by chance, by happenstance, I took a, uh, a, a a risk and went to Sydney, Australia, and then everything changed after that. <laughs> oh my god! I decided what? this is what I want to do: travel. I know. I feel like you go on one trip and you're like, "This, I want this to be my life forever." <laughs> I know. It's like, how can we do this again? So I've been lucky to be extra sneaky to figure out how to make that a full time job. And building my own career was the way to go because working, you know, the traditional way, working in the TV news station or working at a production company, I've done all of that, but it really, it wasn't quite what I wanted to do. And so being able to work by myself, be independent and be a freelancer and an entrepreneur and a hustler. <laughs> yeah, you carved above. your own lane. You definitely carved your own lane in order to kind of make traveling more important and more pivotal to your career. And on that note, if you have any questions for Juliana, be sure to drop them in the chat because I feel like this is a really, really great stream for anyone who wants to follow a similar path or, you know, just wants to make better travel videos. This is like the perfect stream for you. Um, all right, Juliana, will you tell us uh, a little bit more about your career? Yeah, I mean, just being able to work independently is so important to me and do things that excite me. So, you know, we've all done the thing for the paycheck and there's nothing wrong with that, but I always find time to, to do the things for passion. And by doing those passion projects, something special comes along and they get paid for it, right? It's something to do with doing what you love, taking action, having results, having that finished product, and then you can turn around and show someone else and then suddenly they wanna buy that. <laughs> Yes, so that's just a little like piece of how I think things got rolling for me. That's amazing. I feel like a lot of people will be able to take something away from the stream, especially those who are just looking to kind of take their maybe hobby into a full on career. I feel like this is a really, really great stream for those people. And we're going to learn so much from you. So I know you have put together a little slideshow here, giving us a little bit more information and as to your background and your process and all of that. So why don't we go ahead and uh, get into that? Yeah, I just wanted to show you a couple of photos from the road because it's fun to see like, yeah, you travel, but really, <laughs> I actually, I actually, uh, you know, I love to go overseas when possible, but I love to explore my own backyard. So everywhere is travel in my book. Uh, I've been to faraway places and, you know, I, I consider myself an editor, but it's funny because that's always been like this hidden talent because first and foremost, people see me out in the field with my cameras. So I love to take pictures and be in the field, be a producer, be the on-camera talent. And then when I'm at home editing, I'm always like hiding in my cave. <laughs> yeah, you but play that's... all the roles, all the roles here. Yeah, all the things. So just being, being the editor is actually that superpower, being able to take everything and make it look good. You know, if I didn't have the editing skills, none of this would matter. So it's kind of cool how that kind of comes to to be. And I've been to places far away like Canada, not too far, I guess. Korea, this is where I was born. Um, oh this was, gosh. you know, the Gangnam style. I used to teach English and work there, actually, um, wow. for fun. This is um, Kazakhstan, my latest adventure. I got to go across around the world to uh to to explore a place i'd never ever considered going and now i totally want to go back <laughs> oh that's so amazing how travel can kind of open up your horizons and just kind of give you a different perspective like it wasn't on your radar and now you're like i want to go back 
Yeah, totally. And like places like Mexico, I think, are one of those places a lot of Americans get to visit, which is fun for just vacation. But there's also a lot of culture in Mexico. Um, Yeah. I've been to Morocco. I loved getting especially the mix of cultures there. Uh, you know, it's just in the middle of so many different places. So it has a really unique culture and uh, and faraway places. So do you want to see a little video? <laughs> Yes, I would love to see a little video and then uh, all the viewers can get a little get more familiar with you and your work if they weren't already. Okay, here's a here's a hit. Oops, these are my logos. <laughs> Perfect. Here's the video. I need to know. Just landed in Denver, the Maha City. Ready for adventure? So this is the design district. We're inside of a bubble wrap igloo. <laughs> I'm surrounded by super trees. Oh my gosh, wow. We are knee deep in the bushes. Whoa, hello. Whoa. <laughs> Say cheese! Cheese! We're ready for my close-up. <laughs> we have matching hats! Twins! So this walk snakes around, zigzags back and forth up the mountain. This is otherworldly. Now, what to wear? This, this, or this? Today I'm going crazy for cranberries! <laughs> but no matter the adventure, we'll walk away with a great story. Oh, we got company on my backpack. Oh! Oh, he took my sunglasses! No! Here are you free? Cuter on a scooter. The Tusker. I love him so much. This doesn't get better than that. Wow. And I that just was found a another bonus. one. Wow. Bonus content. Bonus, <laughs> bonus. Definitely caught me off guard. That was such a great <laughs> reel. And you can tell already just from that, like your editing is so tight and you kind of kept me engaged the entire time and then you even fooled me at the end so i can't wait to learn from you for on this stream and if you have any questions remember drop them in the chat i'll be sure that juliana gets to them um but yeah this was such a great reel thank you so much for sharing that with us thank you and something i do all the time as i make reels except i haven't made a a, a good one lately but it's funny because i'm always making reels to show folks what what I, what it is that I want to do. So if it yeah. is I want to travel, I need a travel reel. If I want to be a speaker, I need a speaker reel. If I'm going to be the MC or like on, you know, on stage, I need that kind of reel. So anything you want right. to do, you can create that in a short one minute video. Yeah, you're so right. It's useful to have that kind of like uh, just something to showcase your work in a fun, engaging video is like so useful these days. And I can see all your editing skills put to use in this reel and I'm sure in all your other reels. So that's uh, a really great pro tip. And uh, moving forward here a little bit, what actually inspired you to pursue a career as a travel video journalist? Because I mean, everyone loves to travel, but taking it that one step further, that's like another level of commitment, another just like, yeah, you have to invest in that time and energy. And so I'm wondering, like, what made you want to do that? Yeah, it's interesting because I, I never really knew about travel when I was younger. And getting that first taste, getting to study abroad in Australia and hang out with koalas and see kangaroos in the wild and snorkel in the Great Barrier Reef, just having those experiences was so magical. Yeah. And I thought, how can I share this, these amazing things in the world? And I feel like if I had never discovered them, I would be a totally different person. So in a weird way, I think me making content is not just fulfilling to me as a as an artist but it's also a level of of i i want to share this gift with the world i don't want to keep this inside and be like a a, a hog i want Board you to it, try yeah. it and i want you to play it. i want you to do it so i it's like it's just like psa message <laughs> i never had when i was younger like travel you need to travel like this is a must and now that i know about it i want everyone else to know about it too yeah, I can. And I can like feel it from you, you know, now I'm like, I want to go to Kazakhstan. Maybe I should put that <laughs> on my list. And I feel like a lot of people, uh, they travel, right? And they take all this video and footage and then they just sit on it and they just keep it for themselves. Maybe they don't even ever look back on it. And I feel like what you're doing, doing really capitalizes on it, but leverages it to share and kind of spread joy to others instead of just kind of uh, having that beautiful footage all to yourself, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, I think you can definitely travel and enjoy it for what it is, the experience, mm -hmm. the memories, the rest, relaxation, and also discovery. However, for me, the creating of content is also half the fun. So I just love having these little moments in a package. And I can't, yeah. I really can't afford to take pictures and videos of everything. So I have to be right. very selective. 
Like this is something that's worthy of videoing and making a video and editing it because it takes so many hours. But yeah. I just, I love having that that full circle memory. And, and for me, I also want that video to reflect the real experience. So it's just, it's that's very, so uh, I don't know, is that meta? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's like a balancing act that you're doing. And also uh, it takes a lot of planning and production to make sure you're kind of hitting the marks you want to hit, per se, for that country or that place so that you're, you know, getting the footage that you need, but also not getting footage you don't need, which I think is more what you're saying is mo more important, like not taking footage that only you actually want to sort through and use. <laughs> Yeah, you can definitely have too much and it can yeah. be overwhelming. Yeah. And I, I make that mistake all the time because life is so cool. And you're like, oh, like, let's film that. Let's see this. Let's do that. And you come home, you're like, what do I do with all of this? Yes. But with practice, with practice, with, with experience, you start to realize like how to filter out the things that are not worthy. And even today, it's I think it's easier with people having these subject matter expertise areas, like somebody is a beauty expert, mm -hmm. somebody is a fashion expert and a food expert, how narrow that that level of detail is, but it actually helps you organize like, okay, this is a food thing. I'll make a food video because I'm a food blogger. I think that actually is like helpful sometimes to have parameters. So okay. when you travel, you don't have to get everything, but right. pick one or two lanes that really excite you. And, stick and for that, me, yeah. Yeah. And for me, it's definitely um, like adventures, experiences. It's like the things to do, the activities. That's really my passion. But of course, that includes, uh, you know, an, act, an outdoor adventure and a food and a lifestyle luxury thing. So I kind of do touch all of them, but I try really hard to focus on what's something that, that you too can experience and, and walk away with a memory on. Wow. Yeah. I think you're, you're, what you're saying is like having those creative constraints for yourself can be really valuable. So you kind of have a focus instead of trying to capture everything with your trip or everything in one video. And I think that's, uh, yeah, a, a, an important lesson to learn as a content creator and just video producer. Um, I have yeah. a really good question here from Alex Hogue that kind of touches on this. So their question is, what do you find the most challenging aspect of constantly traveling and managing content slash editing? Or do you edit once you're back Ooh. home? I feel like, you know, we were talking about shooting too much. So this is like a great time to tackle this. <laughs> oh, that's a great question. And it really fits into the theme of today because never before have we had technology that was so available. And now we really can produce content on the road. And so it's really a matter of expectations like is that are you a daily blogger and you need to produce content every day for me luckily i didn't sign up for that one <laughs> because it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot to ask to do that daily so i think in that case i'm i'm i have the the luxury of coming home and really focusing on something and posting evergreen content but you know i do do I'll do a report on some adventures that I'll do, like a, an event. Like when I went to Adobe Max, I wanted to show people what I was up to. And so those things have a little bit shorter timeline where maybe you want to post it immediately or within the next right. day or two. Um, so yeah, the timelines I think today are getting shorter and shorter. The technology is making it more and more possible. But then there's also that level of like, okay, what am I, what is my expectation for what am I actually going to accomplish and focus yeah. on? And uh, yeah, so for managing the media and stuff, I definitely... I, I always try to copy my footage every night. I come home, I download the memory cards, I copy it twice because I will be so sad if I come home and I don't, and like something bad happens. Like oh my, gosh, I lose, my camera gets stolen or the memory card breaks or, you know, I always just make sure I have that backup. And then after that, I can keep living life. <laughs> That's that's a really good pro tip there. Just like backing everything up nightly. That way you're not stressed about accidentally formatting your card or doing you know getting it stolen like you said yeah that's a, yeah. a really good tip and do you tend to edit once you're back home or uh do you start editing while you're traveling i think if i can start the media management process on the road like maybe i'm uh you know putting things organizing by folders uh maybe get it into premiere pro be able to sort of put things on a timeline that's probably like just double check like did is things are things in focus or you know did, did the record are things working i might do a simple check like that but i rarely really dive into the full full edit unless i have an immediate turnaround um because in that case 
then it's an ex even exchange for your time and yet it. So yeah. if you're out there having an exciting experience and then you want to stay home and edit, you have to decide like, which is more important to me. So right. that's where I get into you trouble. You be out there getting more cool, <laughs> cool footage instead you're yeah. editing. So that becomes like a personal decision. You got to look in your heart, Alex, figure out what you want to do, start editing or go out there and have fun. <laughs> <laughs> and editing is fun, but it is always hard to figure out. It's a like, solo yeah, activity, the though. Pres the pressure of like missing something, the FOMO, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. A, it really, it really is a good exercise on priorities. <laughs> Definitely. And we have this awesome question here from Alessandra Lopez. Uh, they're wondering how did you start traveling in terms of budgeting and just the finances of it? I know you said you were a college student, you hadn't. You hadn't traveled, then you got a passport, started traveling. That can be kind of an intimidating aspect of travel, traveling. So do you have any tips for some for uh, for that? Yeah, I definitely am a big like travel points and rewards hacker. <laughs> Anytime you have a big purchase coming up, get a new credit card, especially one that gives you a lot of rewards points and start spending money on the credit card and then pay it off every month in full. That's the response. Yeah, be side. smart. Yeah, this don't. Is don't yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't get interest because that will ruin you but yeah. use the credit card and pay it off and then take all the rewards so you can earn those free hotel points and those free frequent flyer miles and you can travel a little bit longer a little bit yeah. better a little bit and more use often. that to kind of help you out to kind of sponsor your trip in a way <laughs> with your previous purchases that you're doing responsibly uh, yes. This isn't Sponsor yourself. financial advice. This is just some pro tips here. <laughs> <laughs> but if I you are going to buy a new computer or something that's like a big expense, that could actually add up to a lot of rewards points on your credit card, especially yeah. a lot of the ones when you get them at first, there's like a certain amount you have to spend right away within the first like three months and then you get the big payoff. So yeah, I definitely yeah, want to. It's, it's all about being strategic with your purchases that you're already planning on making and kind of making it all work for you. So I hope that helps you out, Alessandra. It's a really good question. Um, yeah, you know, and there's a be. lot of like budget hacker, you know, budget tips out there. A lot of my friends are focused on that. And it's interesting what you think might be so expensive and so luxurious actually can be done in so many different ways. So don't let the money stop you. I don't think you should spend 100% a credit card adventure. <laughs> but I mm -hmm. think I think you should definitely consider like if I put a little bit away every week, I could actually have a pretty cool experience. I don't have to go first class, like luxury, this and that. Like you can stay, especially when you're getting started, there's hostels, which are very affordable price. Um, and you share, there's a lot of sharing going on. So that way, like prices are not as expensive. So I think at every budget, at every age, there's different ways to travel. And so don't let, don't let money stop you. I think you'll figure it out. Yeah, that's really good advice. Like you can find a travel excursion for your budget almost always. And there are definitely different uh, sites that can help you with that. I'm sure you have some advice on that and on your videos. And, you know, there's a lot of that content out there. So I think if you keep keep an eye on stuff, you probably can find a really cool adventure to get into that you can, you know, do without over extending your finances which no one wants to do you know you shouldn't do no. um <laughs> there's a travel for every budget i totally agree with you and um i know for me and a lot of others out there traveling can be like a huge source of inspiration how do your travel experiences influence your creative process and the content you produce juliana Oh, travel is the best inspiration for for being creative you're constantly in new situations you know, you're aware of your senses, you're, you're hearing sounds you don't normally hear, you're smelling different fragrances and, and spices and, you know, just really visually seeing the most beautiful colors and nature, right? So yeah. really, I think taking yourself out of your comfort zone, getting out of your everyday routine can really just excite all of your senses yeah, yeah. this is just the <laughs> just like awaken <laughs> everything goes off in your brain you're ready to make i feel like after a really good trip yeah you just really have to get yourself out of the norm normal everyday thing even when you're at home you can take a walk in a different direction than normal or a different path and just those little changes give you that aha like you know what what how could i apply this this new idea to what i'm working on 
Definitely. I totally agree with you. We're such creatures of habit that sometimes doing it in your own backyard is tough, but it can also be really uh, eye opening. So I, I totally agree with you there. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty here. How did you get started using Adobe products specifically? I know you said Adobe Premiere Pro is what you're using to edit a lot of your travel videos. So give us a little background on that, because I feel like, you know, there's so many uh, tools and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, I, I I have always, since I was young, uh, been creating things on the computer. And it was always annoying at the beginning when you'd start with some random program and then like a year later it's dead and like, no, oh, there's yeah. no future. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being at this curve of like products and being like, okay, well, that was interesting. Um, so anyway, it's I, I like being on, on Team Adobe because these products have all been with us for years and years and years and they keep innovating. So there's just, there's, there's always gonna be a future and a past to the projects that you create and nothing is final. You can always go back and edit something that you started with. For me, like moving to Premiere Pro was really about the time when uh, a lot of the footage from DSLR cameras was was very heavy and difficult to, to understand for other, other software. And Premiere Pro was able to really take multiple types of footage into one software and just like literally just work. How hard is that? Just works. So that's my long and short answer of like, you know, just it works. Yeah, <laughs> And it definitely. will work for the future. Yeah, you're kind of uh, future proofing yourself. And future you know proof. that there's like some uh, updates that are only going to help your workflow as opposed to lack of updates or maybe even like su stuff not being supported anymore. And then you're like, I can't open this project anymore because the software is not there. So yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you there. Yeah, that would be a huge crisis. <laughs> and I've been doing this for a long time. I have this huge library and may many, many hard drives of travel vlogs from around the world. And and I can open up a project from 10 years ago and continue editing if I want, you know? It's just that's like, so that's cool. how cool it is to say, I I'm not done with that. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> or, right. You know, I or still give it a second pass play. 10 years later, right? If you wanted yeah. to. Yeah. So I think that's the, the best part is having this like this like system that just works. Yeah. So can we get into your project here? I would love to see how you're using Premiere Pro to kind of bring your travel stories to life and see like a little preview of your workflow. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about how much I how, like everything that I do is here in Premiere Pro. I really don't need to shop around, download this and download that. And that's really the genius of it. Um, being able to, to just have this one program in multiple formats. For me, like for example, I don't know if you guys are using workspaces yet, but up in the top right corner, just being able to, to flip around and say, okay, right now I'm gonna focus on editing and it kind of jumbles around all the windows to a, a, a situation that would be ideal for that. And then being to flip to audio, and now I'm ready for for doing sound mixing, and suddenly I'm ready to do effects. So I just think, just from the beginning, having having this kind of flexibility is really helpful. Yeah, definitely. I love using those workspaces. I feel like I always use the vertical one, uh, uh -huh. vertical workspace. I'm now that you know vertical video is so popular. I love being able to switch. And then you can start a new sequence with a different workspace. It's super, super handy. Can we get a little preview of your organization? I know you were talking earlier about uh, how you start with the media in the beginning and maybe you'll start organizing it. I would love to see that. And I feel like some people underestimate how important it is to get organized in order to actually finish your video edit. I'm sure there's a lot of people listening who are halfway through an edit. Uh, and maybe if they had organized it better, they'd be done by now. I know it happens to me. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I was thinking that too, because so much of what I do, I want to be efficient. Yeah. And I think just having a system really gets you to the creative stuff faster. And so for me, like I have these um, little, I have all my folders kind of organized pretty similarly every time. And so for example, I let's, let's just do something. Let's just start a new project. Um, if I was to start a new one called like, uh, what? let's call it Sample. <laughs> Adobe live, <laughs> oops, Adobe live. And, um, I can't see right here. I think you can see. So I have these little templates set up mm -hmm. 
that this is sort of new in Premiere Pro. Like, I, I, I think this is so valuable. They already start you with like a broadcast template, social media template. Like here, I can even open up the social media one for fun and um, hit create. And I love it because it actually has all of these, um, these built-in templates for, I think um, Adam was talking about this earlier today. There's um, TikTok and YouTube, like all these different like preset starter packs, essentially. Yeah, they're like pre-started sequences. They're like loaded up, pre-loaded sequences with all the information that you need to make sure you're uh, posi kind of the composition of your video makes sense for the platform that you're going to share it with. And I think that alone takes a lot of the guesswork out when you're trying to kind of load up your footage and you're seeing, oh, maybe this clip really doesn't make sense when I'm trying to make a TikTok video because it's it's too close or it's too, you know, everything, you, you lose a lot of context or whatever. So I think those are really, really handy uh, kind of uh, templates that are built in. Yeah, totally. And so for me, I actually went ahead, like if I'm going to start a new project, we can call it Adobe Live again. Um, but I, so sometimes I'll start with that if I want to, but I actually started a new template called Jules Vlog. And nice. I just thought this would be the easiest way to just get started every time where, oops, where I'm able to, oops, says, do you want to replace? Yes. Oh yeah. Cause we just where, did it. <laughs> I just added like my own uh, folders in here. Ooh. So this is a brand new one and I put all these folders in here. So now I can just drag and drop stuff into the bin where they belong. And then I also I started that. with these with these little timelines so that for example, this is my, my little um, logo like ID, right. Traveling Jewels with the arrow. And then um, this is where I would put the location. And then it actually does like the, the little ending card. Right. So these things alone, having them already built in is saving me so much time. Then like, where's that thing? What size is it? What time do I want it to go at? You mm -hmm. know? Time and you're nice. like inspired to start dragging the new footage, the new clips in there and start just seeing how it's going to look as opposed to being like, well, if I start editing this now, I still got to drag in the text and all this other stuff, just things that are going to make you maybe want to put the computer down for a second. You know, <laughs> the more momentum you can get in the beginning, the better. And I feel like this template is proof of that. Yeah. And I even made one for Instagram because that one was always the stressful one. Like I did it mm. once and now I have to do it again. Yeah. yeah so I, yeah. I did the same thing. And even down below, it's hard to see. Um, there should be. Well, yeah. So it's just nice to have a, a place to start. Now, I also have one, <clears throat> I have one called AF, which stands for all footage. And that's where I start with my actual footage. So if I have, I'm going to open up, I, this is bad. You're not going to love this part. <laughs> I'm a dragger and dropper. <laughs> I, I feel like that's efficient. So I don't see a problem with drag and dropping. <laughs> it's funny because, you know, I, I know we should use the media bin, but this is what I do. So inside of my folders, so I always start with a pretty organized, this is just like even the folder within mm -hmm. uh, my, hard, my hard drive. And I have everything organized, acquired as footage that, um, or photos that I didn't create specifically for this, but it, it's something that I stole and borrowed for this. Wow. Um, Adobe would be all of my project files exports is like the final the final videos for everything um music so anyway we're talking about original footage mm -hmm. and in here i know for sure i went on this trip to wisconsin and it was three days and the only part i want to edit today with you is the third day so okay. inside of day three are all of these different cameras i wow. used a, a canon eos r5c which has two different memory cards and then I used an R5, which has also two different memory cards, and a drone, and a GoPro, and a... This is the audio unit, the Tascam DR10L. Mm -hmm. So I'm wearing a separate audio recorder. Right. Pro tip. You have and a then... lot of media to sort through <laughs> per day. Wow. Yes, especially because of the two memory cards. So it's this is definitely a, an advanced workflow, just so you know. like it, It's fun. What I, what I produce is very fun and 
it looks effortless, but there's a lot of effort in here. <laughs> yeah, but I think that goes, I feel like anyone who's starting out, even if they only have a, one camera or even like a camera and an iPhone, it can be intimidating for them trying to figure out how to manage all that media or like your friend who took footage and now you need them to airdrop it to you so you can include it in your vlog. You know, like there's a lot of media management happening even for the for the beginner. So I feel like seeing this, if you start off organized, you're only going to kind of stay organized as you expand your equipment. So it's always a good idea. Yeah. So I just put everything in a folder. So I, if I was shooting iPhone that day and my friend did airdrop me, I would make one called iPhone, drop right. it in and like have its own folder so that I'm never confused. Like, what did I, what did I get from, from that camera or, you right. know, how should I treat that camera? So that's my, my process is being able to put everything into this and look, all of the folders have been maintained so I can nice. still access the, the drone and the, the, whatever the Canon R5C mm -hmm. and all the different cameras. And then for me, I just drag it and drop it onto the, um, onto the all footage timeline, which right now I have set as H it's, it's, um, it's an HD, uh, timeline, not, but I, I shoot everything in 4k, but mm -hmm. the timeline is, is HD for right now. Yeah. So okay, I'm just cool. dragging and dropping all the files onto the onto that timeline and you're trying to get all the footage that you captured for day three. Would you yeah. do all the footage that you captured for the entire trip generally, or would it be just per, per day? Oh, that is too much for one timeline. Yeah. <laughs> I would probably make one timeline for day one, one timeline for day two. Got it right. just depends how many things, because when I go on these trips, especially when I'm there to create content, it adds up. It's a lot. So I definitely yeah. feel like you know, even though it's pretty, it's pretty exciting to be able to to do these things. It's it's definitely an effort, right? To um to to create. So anyway, so this is and also what something when I was doing this earlier, I noticed the um the drone footage didn't it, there there are these weird SRT files that it doesn't seem to like to drag and drop. Mm -hmm. So just to do the slowest way possible, I'm just gonna um select only the drone clips and drag them onto the timeline. Cool. Now this is maybe weird, but I actually put everything, each camera, like kind of on its own track. I was noticing that. So that I'm already kind of organized. Like I already know not everything from, from the main camera is going to be a roll, but all of the times when I'm on camera and I'm holding the camera, like vlogging, that's a roll. And that's going to be on the first track. So I always start with okay. that camera on that track. And then every other camera is going to be B-roll. So I put that on the next track up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is just like my basic, like getting started. And you'll see there's actually a ton of uh, like, there's a lot on this timeline. Well, a lot of it is photos. So if I zoom in right. here, I could show you that these pink things are all pictures. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I was to go into label and collect select group, because every photo comes in as a lavender is that lavender? Yeah, officially yeah. lavender. I can select all the lavender things and hit delete and all the photos are gone. So nice. that's just like one way okay. to keep organized. Yeah, that's that's really neat. I feel like you have all these little tricks to kind of speed up your workflow. <laughs> and I know that you've learned them over years of kind of putting in the editing hours. <laughs> yeah, like just manually copying and pasting or dragging, you can do that. And then yeah, also or, or trying to avoid your photos when you're selecting things would be also kind of tedious. So, so I totally understand all these little hot tips here. Yeah. And then see, look, they're still all spread out. So this is the other little thing that I do um, is inside of the window, the all footage window, I'll go to um, close gap, which is okay. a special button under sequence. And this will delete all of these gaps. Hold on. Close gap. It will like smoosh them together. There they, so now there I can see what we're yeah. working with. Nice. So now you have like a master huge timeline of all the footage of all the cameras that you can sift through. Yeah. And from there, you know what? I really just like to go through. I, you know, I remember in my head that the last thing I filmed in the day was um, was me talking to mm -hmm. the camera. So for there, I might highlight that. I, I have a color for Jules. Um, I color Jules pink so I make the clips oh. pink knowing like those are my vlogger clips I was and gonna say also... I can tell you have the signature pink 
color <laughs> and I like to see that you have this signature pink coming mm. through also on the on the behind the scenes of the edit. It's it's you know, it's a following. boring timeline is no fun. I love it. I love I love seeing that you're like infusing that everywhere. It's it's really cute. Totally. And what's funny is it's actually because it's 4K, I have to do one more step is I need to um, select everything and hit set to frame size. Mm -hmm. So that way my face isn't too huge. <laughs> right. For this moment, I was like, this is too much jewel. So I have to back it up a little bit. <laughs> Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and tweak these. I don't know if you have more, but I'm going to. So I actually shoot everything 4K and it's even UHD. So it's a little bit wider than 4K. Mm -hmm. So I have to go through and see. But originally it had like these little letter boxes. Yeah. I just do a manual like 50% okay. and then I'm pretty close to where I need to be. And then I will actually, um, let's do one other thing before we do this. Let's go to color correction. So Lumin, Lumin, Lumitri mm -hmm. color. Mm -hmm. I like to do add a LUT because I know right now everything's looking kind of like gray right? because I shoot it log. So I'm going to go ahead into the creative um, look area. And I have some templates actually saved in my Dropbox cool. where I just want to have easy access. And these are the only two LUTs that I use the most. So I'll just click on one and make make that look good. And then even nice. for this other camera, it's actually a slightly different LUT, even though it's almost the same camera. So I'll go in and do the same thing. I'll go browse and I'll get a different LUT for that camera. And so that way I can go ahead and just like, I just like to start out with everything looking good and then I can be creative. So this is all just right. the beginnings of getting started. Cause then you can like kind of see which footage is actually looking eye catching versus without it placed on top, you might miss something or edit something out that otherwise maybe it looked really cool, but you didn't have that LUT on there and the colors weren't popping the way you, you expected them to or vice versa. Yeah, I have such a hard time when you're looking at it to really get the feeling if it doesn't like yeah. quite look right. So yeah, you're I like, it wasn't, start... it wasn't that gray that day when I filmed. Why is it looking a little gray? It's a little uninspiring. I totally get what you're saying. And yeah, you so like I just a... did that for one clip and then I'm just going to copy that to everything else just so that Got I'm it. all good. Yeah. Along with the size, right? You copy the, the LUT and the size, I assume. Yeah. So I basically am going to go to paste attributes. Mm -hmm. So first, I so the clip we were playing with was this one, mm -hmm. and I I do the apple or the apple C the 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 copy, mm -hmm. and then I actually would probably um, remove attributes so that it is gone. Like any any anything that was on there so already you're not is gone it twice. Yeah, yeah, so don't get double. And then I will paste it, and then see everything is checked: motion, time, color, and especially color. So then when I paste it, everything gets that same treatment. So now we're ready to rock. Nice. Yeah. And then you don't have to do that per clip, which would you'd be there a whole extra day. Yeah, if you're exactly. Doing it one by one. Now, you have like a really high energy and signature style to your videos, uh, your travel videos. How would you describe your creative approach to storytelling with your videos? And what do you prioritize when you're um, kind of creating a video in order to kind of show that off? Oh, it's interesting because I really love to get people excited to come, but like also that is like naturally who I am. I'm naturally like kind of over the top. <laughs> so I, I think the secret is to give, give enough enthusiasm so that people are interested in the video, but also have um, real waves so that it's, it's just like paced appropriately. Um, okay. And for me, like, I, I, I think a lot of that happens in the scripting, like being able to Ooh. put to pace the scripting so that I'm talking in balance with the music in balance with any of any other talking sound sound bites mm -hmm. um, or sound effects. I think for me, that's really the secret of the, the sauce is getting that the balance of all the ingredients in in order. In in order, yeah. Do you have an example of that in the timeline that you could show us? Maybe capturing a little bit of that? I know that um, it, you have to do it throughout an entire video, so the balance is long, but you know, maybe there's a little part that, that is special to you and you're like, this is kind of how I always try to edit. Yeah, I mean, I'll even sh I can even show you the end of this um, sequence here where 
where oh you know what i'm not in our actual one that we were doing there we yeah go. you're in the sample one <laughs> well while you're looking just... for the other one let me just remind everyone we're here with juliana brosty she's an incredible travel vlogger and video journalist and if you have any questions for her during the stream bring your questions over drop them in the chat and i'll be sure she gets to them there's so much to learn here especially if you also aspire to become a travel creator or just uh are already trying to do it and you need some tips Make sure you bring them in the comments. Uh, we'll be sure to get to them. All right, Julian, show us, show us show us what we're working with here, how you get your signature style infused into your travel vlogs. Or travel I'll give you, video I'll give you the, just the beginning of this edit, which is pretty much finished, but just to give you a feeling and you can see visually where the pacing is. Today I'm going crazy for cranberries. <laughs> I'm in a cranberry marsh here in Wisconsin. Welcome to Rooted in Red. It just so happens to be harvest season. But this doesn't happen all year round. So cranberries actually grow. So yeah, I just feel like I wanted to open it like a lot of social media. You want to start with your face. It's just something like yeah. the algorithm knows what faces are and let's start with faces. <laughs> and people like faces, I feel like, right? Like I, I, it's easier to connect as a human to your video if I see who's talking as opposed to just like a voiceover. Yeah. And so just figuring out what's that first sentence, what mm -hmm. is that thing that's going to grab someone and hook them into this story? If I just start with some weird fact, like, by the way, 1 million cranberries are grown every fall. You know, it's it's not really fun. But if, if I start with something, this is even a little cheesy, but I'm like, you know, I'm going crazy for cranberries. It just, it, I wanted you to just get that taste of who's talking, what we're talking about, and then I'm going to dive in. Like, I actually stopped the video, but that's where I start to tell you the nerdy part, which is like, right. this is how it works. <laughs> right, right, right. And when you're out uh, filming, do you script this kind of stuff out beforehand? Or are you just such a pro at this point that you're like ad-libbing and then when you get home, you find the good bits? You know, it's funny because I wanted to show you, um, this is like just... I think it's through practice and so many times I am vlogging for multiple days or there's so many pieces to the puzzle. You don't always know how it's all going to fit. Right. But one of the reasons I really love this story is the way that it all unfolded because I was out in the field on a trip um, to this cool cranberry marsh um, in Wisconsin and uh, we had only like an hour or two. It was very limited window of time and we were controlled in a sense where we were on a tour. So somebody right. gave us an explanation then they walked us around and at the last minute we got to put on the waders and go inside. Well, what you don't know is like a lot of the time I had to wait for other people to like move out of the way because they were all doing their content or their adventures and I didn't really necessarily want them in my video. And um, right at the end, they, uh, you know, I've been so patient and at the end they're like, okay, it's time to go. And I'm like, no, I'm not ready. I didn't do my thing yet, you know? So it all got done in a hurry. And I think that's actually the best thing for what happened. Because I didn't overshoot. Because you have like the high energy too. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't have all this like extra stuff. It's like straight to the point. This is how much time we have. Let's do, let's go. So here, I, I mean, I, I, I could show you a piece of this, but literally what I said is what you saw. And it only happened at the very end of the, of the adventure when I had already learned all the facts. And I'm literally just exact repeating what I learned from the whole morning in my way. Let's so see I it. I would love to see the full clip versus, you know, the the edit that's definitely kind of like perfected. Yeah. And even too, like, I, and I know you're probably using um, text-based editing, but I just thought this would be fun to show too, because if I, I, if I pull this little clip and like process, you can see all of the sound and there's not a whole lot that I deleted. And there were times where I rearranged it. So like, yeah. you're going to see, I gave all the information and at the very end, I gave that opening line, um, we're going crazy for cranberries. It's like the very last thing I said, right. because I had just repeated all of this information. And at the end, I'm like, you know, I don't, I need something to like get us into the story. And so at the very, so, you, so anyway, blah, 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 Jewel says all this stuff. And then at the end, I say, today I'm going crazy for cranberries. <laughs> <laughs> And then I'm like, okay, reset. Let's do it again. <laughs> Today I'm going crazy for cranberries. Cool. Oh my gosh, I love these kinds of <laughs> clips because I feel like I feel like travel vloggers and just content creators make it look so effortless. Like 
for example, your video was so clean and effortless. And then the behind the scenes is like, oh, you thought about it. You added it at the end. You did a second take. It's uh, not that it's not effortless, but it's thought. It's thoughtful. It's not, you know, it's something that you really is a muscle that you practice and then you edit it to make it even better. And I feel like yeah, some it's people like spontaneous, would think spontaneous, but can be better for sure. Yeah, exactly. And some people might think uh, maybe that was the first take or maybe that's really the natural way you said it, but you cut it up to be better. And you were like, this, the edit would be better if I did this at the beginning and, you know, text-based editing can help you do that. <laughs> yeah. And I just feel like it was nice to like, even it's funny in the video, you can hear me. I'm like, I say like, I'm like, and cut. <laughs> Yeah, you're like, got it. That's gonna, cool. That's gonna work. <laughs> I'm like, I got it. And then I'm like, we can get on the bus. I can leave now. So anyway, this is this is an interesting tool because I I feel like it it I was I'm able to what I do every video, this is the essence of all my vlogs, is starting with the sound, starting with the story. I try to get it in the field. If I fail, I can do voiceover later, but I really right. try to do it in the moment because that's when you're excited and you learn everything. And I just chop up what I say and there are parts in here like um, I talk about like food trucks and parties. This place is so gorgeous. It's picturesque like right around here. I talk about <laughs> I trucks. always wanted to come to, um, you know, this part was like, OK, I don't have any footage of anyone doing a party at this factory. I'm going right. to delete that, you know, so I really just narrowed in on what I want to show. And I, I can just literally like highlight that sentence, put it in the front of my video. Um, easily, like you can right click on all these pauses um, up here in the filters thing. I learned how to do this recently. I was like, wow, you could click on pauses and then just hit like delete and then all of them go away. It's so your... <laughs> sweet how they can all go away and you don't have to yeah. sit there and kind of try and hone in on the exact start and stop of the pause. It's really today. Crazy. Yeah, so it's just a matter of like figuring out, like getting straight to the nuts and bolts. Here's my words, which ones are relevant, which ones are said the way that I want them said, and then I put them in order. And that's where I really do the pacing of of like, mm, I talked about this part of the process way too long, I'm gonna delete that, you know? So I really just fine tune how I want it to feel with this. And then everything else is just like the extra texture. I like to add music right after this. Um, I'll put in the best B-roll, like my cool drone shots and like sexy cranberry footage. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Anything. I just like populate it on top of the script that exists um, as written in the field. Wow. I love seeing this, like seeing how the sausage gets made because the video itself, you know, the actual edited version is so polished and nice and beautiful and like, yeah, it's very captivating. And then seeing like, oh, the footage was there, but you had to do all these tweaks to get it to be exactly how you wanted it to be. It just makes so much sense when you're saying it, but it's a hard thing to practice. Um, and I think it's really hard to capture that A role in the in the field, like you said. That's, that's kind of like a, it takes um, confidence. It also takes like, you kind of have to know what you're trying to say or what the intent of the video is so you can practice that and capture it on the field. So I just love seeing how you're able to execute that because that's a, that's pretty challenging. Oh, yeah, you're definitely using a lot of muscles to do it all yeah. at once. And and I always thought of myself as a one woman show, you know, producer, shooter, writer, editor, host. And that's fun for me. Like when I worked at a production company and I had to research a story and give it to someone else, I was so annoyed. <laughs> right. I like, like, I, I did all go. this effort and now, you know, now I have to yeah. hand it to somebody else. Yeah. Like, I let me do it. Thing. So like, really it's thing. a joy to be able to think on with all these hats on my head. But it's funny because, yeah, like here, I'll show you. I just, I came across this earlier today. I'm, I'm literally like experiencing um, these cranberries. Okay, okay. Wait, stay in the sun if you can. And I'm like directing oh, well, this guy. Shot, no, shot is okay. I'm like, you're okay, almost in the way. <laughs> <sighs> oh my God. Okay. So it's like wind, shadows, <laughs> back to action. <laughs> I love that. You're like I'm noticing all the things that you need for your footage or you need to fix in the shot. And also yeah. you're also the star. And I think that's yeah. that takes a lot of uh, balance and practice, honestly. <laughs> yeah, like I'm manually setting up the camera. And in this case, I was lucky I didn't have a tr to set up a tripod. And th that was a factor of me not having time too. It was like, we have to go. And I'm like, yeah. 
I'm like, come here. I need your help. Stand here. No, just kidding. I was nice, but it was just actually he was my friend. But it was just it's funny when these situations like you have to go yeah. with what you can, what you got, what you can do. And so yeah, I was I was setting up the camera. I was like, I I knew what lens we had on the camera. I had an idea if I move this way, if he walks this way, this is what we're gonna get. But there is a level of guessing. So yeah. You have and to working still shoot. around it in post as well, right? Yeah. Like trying to figure out the best way to make the footage look as best as possible once you have what you have. <laughs> totally. Just really trying to like work with what you got and get as much as you can. And I shoot everything in 4K so that I can reframe it a little yeah. bit later. And um, yeah, and just really, really the, the joy of being able to create in the edit is like just seeing all of this come to life because... A lot, a lot of, you know, embarrassingly, a lot of the stuff that I do make, some of it never gets edited and it's really a matter of time. I don't have yeah. re unlimited resources. And so the things that I feel like are really valuable, there's going to be some joy, there's going to be some learning, there's going to be something to share. I'm excited when I, when I get to that final stage and it's like publish. <laughs> Definitely. That's such an exciting, uh, Point when you're finally ready to share after hours and hours of labor. Um, yeah. I wanted to ask you, like you're saying that there's a lot of uh, videos that you don't get to edit or, you know, you have a limited amount of time. So you have to focus on the ones you want to focus on. Do you have anything yeah. to streamline uh, certain tasks that you do in your edits just to make it a little bit faster? I know you showed us the template that uh, you made, but is there anything else that you kind of do just to speed it up now that you know kind of what you're looking for in your videos? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I love to put 100% of my time into that, the crafting of the story. Mm -hmm. And then I'm done. And then I'm like, oh, cr you know what? What's too bad is like, we're never done now when you hit publish, because now you have to create captions and you have to make a thumbnail, thumbnail. and you have to post, <laughs> you have to write a post, you have to post the post, you have to get people like your post. There's so many extra steps beyond being the one woman show that I wanted to be. So I love in Premiere Pro, the, the couple tools that I really think make my life way easier would be captions being able to go straight yes. into this captions and graphics uh, workspace. And I already have the transcript. So in a matter, I sometimes hit this little CC button um, and then that will create a whole, a whole little level up above in the orange. And oh, I that, love that. Yeah. most of the time it's really close. And I feel like it's actually like, even here, like this one time it kind of did something funny. Today, today, I'm going today was its own caption. All you have right. to do is highlight two of them and merge it. And now it's like one caption. So, you know, you can just go in and change a comma to a period or whatever. Just so like this a Google Doc or almost. I mean, that took one half of a second. <laughs> so this makes my life so much easier to just I, I don't actually like putting the caption burned into the video, but I like uploading the caption path with it yeah. so that I can fix little mistakes and stuff like that. And you can and, have captions burned into the social media clips instead or whatever, you know? Yeah. And I even, even cool is like, well, let me show you one other thing. I like to do um, auto reframe, which also saves me so much time. And it's impressive. Yeah. How does it actually do it so quickly? We is, only I'll have just... like, just as a heads up, Jules, we only have about four minutes left on the stream. So okay. maybe we can do the auto refresh. I know we were so caught up chatting away <laughs> of all these different tools time got away from us no worries. we have about four minutes i think we can do a quick auto reframe it's a pretty fast tool oh yeah no worries well i just clicked on it while we we're going i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure ever, i'm like let's just test it out hit a replay but anyway, everyone save the I video was just, i was just so impressed with auto reframe because it really gives gives me a chance to like do other stuff so that's it <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Well, well, I feel like we missed it. Maybe we should do a little replay of how you do it uh, for anyone who missed it while we were chatting. Okay, sure, sure, sure. So I'm going to go back to my original, uh, what is it? Nine or 16 by nine timeline. Perfect. And um, sorry, I moved all the spaces to vertical. So let's go back to like TJP. Oh, yeah. That's my traveling jewels productions. That's like my workspace. So I oh. even made a custom one. And so all you have to do is go up to sequence and, um, oops, I didn't, I have to like highlight the sequence. So I'm doing this Wisconsin cranberry thing. And then at the bottom, it says auto reframe sequence. And there's right a few different sequence. ways you yes. can get to it. Like you can right click on it or whatever, but that's my way. And then I just choose vertical because I'm almost always doing a Instagram version now and I hit create. It's so simple. That was like 
three, two button clicks, maybe three, <laughs> and then it's vertical now. It's so handy. Yeah. And honestly, I'll, we can keep chatting, but I was like, I can just play it in the background because it's, it's crazy how it sort of finds the subject and, and frames it the best way possible. And it'll like zoom a little if it needs to, or, you know, twist things if, if necessary, but it always looks good. Um, yeah, I feel like auto reframe is really handy nowadays when you have to edit for so many different platforms, so many different sizes, and being able to do it quickly so that you don't feel like today you I'm going yet another thing to do is is amazing. Yes, sorry, I was just like I'm gonna play it and turn off the sound for you. Um, <laughs> no, it looks great. That looks awesome. But yeah, I just it saves me so much time. And if I want to go into one clip and like readjust it, I can. But this right. gets me like 95% of the way there. So I just yeah, for me, I can really continue to put my energy into the storytelling. And then this like mechanics of getting it into the right format becomes less of an effort. Definitely, definitely. I could see how all of this, all of these different tools kind of speed up your workflow and make it so you can pump out more of these videos, kind of get more of your content out there from all the different content that you're capturing while you're uh, while you're out there. So I feel like I can see how all these tips and tricks speed up your workflow. Juliana, thank you so much for being with me here today, for sharing so many amazing tips. Can you uh, remind everyone where they can find you at real quick? Uh, your hand. I'm at so Traveling Jewels you. everywhere. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> Traveling Jewels everywhere. Now stay tuned, everyone, and join Evan and Kyle on a new episode of Motion Design Hotline. In this episode, learn how you can create compelling graphics for explainers, documentaries, news campaigns, and anything else with a high demand for convincing and informative graphics. So stay tuned, everyone. Be sure to stay on Adobe Live. And Juliana, once again, thank you so much for sharing this awesome uh, workflow with us. And I can't wait to see more of your videos out there. Thank you. That was so much fun. And I really enjoyed kind of sharing the behind the scenes with you too. Yay. All right, everyone. See you next time on Adobe Live.